okay to understand most of these concepts you should understand the pressure belts and planetary winds okay let us start the topic today in climatology climatology okay friends one basic concept in this is the surface of the earth this is the surface of the earth from any place on the surface of the earth from any place if winds are rising up if winds are rising up that place will have low pressure low pressure why because pressure is nothing but the weight of the air column whatever is the weight of the atmosphere above it weight is weight by area is a pressure when winds are right winds are going up going away from the place the amount of air here will reduce so the pressure will reduce the amount of gas or air will reduce so pressure will reduce so any region on the earth where the winds are rising up there will have low pressure similarly any region of the earth where winds are subsiding where winds are subsiding means winds are coming down there the air mass will not air mass the amo, the amount of the gas is air will be more pressure will be more so it will be high pressure this is something that you should have you should keep in mind before going into this concepts similarly i told you in the previous class but i want to repeat once again on the surface of the earth wherever temperature is very high high temperature generally the air here will be very hot hot high temperature no warm air hot air hot air has less weight or more weight less weight less weight anything that has less weight will rise up or stay there rise up so when temperature is higher at any place on surface of the earth if temperature is higher the air becomes warm hot and light weight it will rise up as it rises the pressure will be low so high temperature means low pressure similarly at any place if temperature is very low that means cool this is hot cool area cold area low temperature there the air will be at low temperature cold air friends cold air this is hot air hot air is less weight less weight it rises up cold air is heavy or light cold air is heavy heavy air stays there or goes away stays there only stays there so pressure will be high pressure this is one concept you should keep in mind i'll just discuss some few few uh, small concepts keep them in the mind understand them then i'll come to the plant pressure belts and plant events first try to understand these things okay so now using this concept using this concept on the earth surface at the equator along the equator generally tell me temperature is high or low along equator high temperature so along equator pressure will be low pressure high temperature means low pressure so along the equator the pressure will be low so this is called low pressure belt low pressure belt because this is like a belt continues like a belt but frankly it is not continuous at some places the pressure may not be so less due to several factors okay one of the factors is one of the factors is see there will be somewhere water land for example see if you draw the whole map africa saudi arabia iran india europe australia south america central america north america greenland if you draw equa if you draw if you draw equator draw india like this see here land again water again land again water again land you understand so land water are there i told you in the previous class land and water will not be at same temperature for example on a sunny day sunny day means when insulation is more hot days 
or hot days which will become hotter land or water land becomes hotter did i tell you about differential heating of land and water did you discuss concepts did i discuss the concepts that water and land both of them will not be heated in a similar way land gets heated quicker than the water did you discuss that or no if i haven't discussed that i will discuss it how many of you were there in the class when i discussed that one raise your hands feel free just four students okay then i will discuss again okay that is it. so this is the first concept you should understand first concept second concept you should understand now third concept i should discuss there are small small concepts you should understand all these small things to get a broad picture of the pressure belts third concept is differential heating differential heating of land and water friends what is this differential heating it means you take land and you take water the water can be river lake ocean whatever mostly let us say oceans only because oceans has more water now so we are taking oceans generally for example at, at afternoon 2 o'clock if you have gone to a temple when you walk without uh, sandals without sandals on if you are walking there is land and water where do you find it's more hot land or water land on right similarly in a cold area midnight 1 am 2 am cold area when you stand on the land or water which is more cooler which is cooler land, land is only cooler okay anyhow i'll come to that now friends see now why why land gets heated quickly than the water first question why see differential heating means they both get heated differently land gets heated quickly water gets heated slowly why the difference that is what we are discussing now if you could not understand you ask me i'll explain once again but you should understand these things because this concept will keep on coming again and again again and again many places so you should understand don't try to buy hard this you should understand okay so why land gets heated quickly than the water what is the reason behind that i will tell you some reasons okay sun rays fall both on land and in water sun rays insulation sun rays come into both land as well as water now in the land uh, in the sorry, first reason in the water sun rays will penetrate for almost 200 meters 300 it will go inside but in the land does sun do sun rays go into the land 200 meters no. they cannot go so this particular sun ray will be heating only this part of the land but this sun ray has to eat this much water so the amount he amount of heat is same but it has to eat this much water land no this much land so which will get heated quickly land only because only small piece is there land that's first reason first reason is the quantity quantity because of penetration of the sun ray deep into the water it has to heat more amount of water that's why it gets slowly heated land quickly heated second thing friend there is something called as specific heat specific heat means see the specific heat of water is more than specific heat of land that means for example there are two material say aluminum and iron take two material okay take same quantity 1 gram of aluminum you take 1 gram of iron take at same temperature both at some 20 degree centigrade example you take iron 1 gram of iron at same temperature 20, 24 degree centigrade you take 1 gram of aluminum 1 gram only same temperature 24 degrees only okay now try to increase their temperature to 25 this one 25 this one also 25 to increase temperature you have to supply heat energy you have to give heat give heat energy so that they, their temperature will be increased now do you think both of them require same amount of heat energy to increase 1 degree 1 degree increase do you think they require same amount of heat energy different amount of heat energy different, different amount of heat energy not same every material is not same some material require more heat to raise temperature 
So, for example, among these two, I do not know which one requires more temperature. That's why instead of iron, I will say X and Y. Then it will be easy for me. Now, let us say Y requires more temperature, more heat. Y will take 2 joules of heat to become 25. But X will take 5 joules. Till 5 joules of heat, it will not come 25. So, specific heat of X is more than Y. Similarly, specific heat of water is more. That means water requires more heat to raise temperature. So, based on this, you can tell that water takes lot of heat, lot of time to get heated. Land gets heated quickly. Second reason. Why land gets it quickly? Second reason. Okay. First, third reason I can tell you the heat energy coming from the sun, heat energy coming from the sun falls in the water. No. Now, as the water gets heated, it gets evaporated. Due to evaporation, some heat energy will go away. Some 20 joules of heat came into the water. In 20 joules, some 5 joules will again go back in the form of vapor. So, water vapor will take away the heat. Whereas, in land, there is no such phenomena. Land, there is no evaporation. No. So, that's why land retains all the heat. Water releases some heat in the form of? Form of? Vapor. vapor. So, the third reason. That is the third reason. Third reason for why land gets heated quickly. The fourth reason you can tell is though heat comes into the water, though water gets heated, water keeps moving. For example, this part of the water is heated. It will keep moving now. Waves, water, uh, uh, other water will come. So, it, the heat will be distributed. So, it's difficult to heat it. Whereas land, do you think this piece of land will, will move around? It will move. So, distribution of heat distribution of heat is less in the land fourth reason why land gets heated quickly fourth reason distribution of heat or say movement movement you can say movement is there in water no movement in the land for another important thing is conduction of heat conduction water is a good conductor of heat heat will transfer through the water if you heat this part of water no it will transfer to other molecules land is not a good conductor of heat if land is a good character of heat, do you know what will happen? On the earth, inside the earth, there is a core. This core has high temperature, almost 6000 degrees centigrade, 6000 or 5000 maybe. Such a high temperature, such a high temperature will easily transfer to surface, no? If, if earth is a good character of heat, heat has to come surface, no? Earth is a very poor character, heat cannot be, uh, heat cannot be transferred, conduction will not happen in the earth. Whereas in the water, conduction of heat happens. You understood? These are the various reasons. For example, one of the prelims questions was, which of the following are the reasons for differential heating of land and water? For example, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Option A is, so one more thing, six, six thing is, six thing is, maybe some other, some waste, I don't know, something they'll write, wrong reason. Okay. Then they'll say option A is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Option B is 1, 3, 5, 6. Option C is 1, 2, 3. What is the answer? Very good. Here is the answer. <laughs> so, in that way, questions, if they want to ask conceptual questions, they'll ask in this way. So, you should know why. Why uh, differential heating is happening. Why both are not similarly getting heated. In this, actually, you can give the same logic for differential cooling also. For differential cooling, which will cool faster? Land will cool faster. Because whatever heat is there in the water, no? It will take a lot of time for water to release all the heat. But land, all the heat is on the surface. It will easily release all the heat. So in the night time, land becomes very cool. Water will be still warm. If you go into the water, no? Still it is warm. But land becomes very cool. It gets cool quickly. So differential cooling, also land first. Heating also, land first. This is the third important concept you should understand. First concept is this one. Second is this one. Third is this one. You should understand these things, okay? They, they may appear as small, small concepts, but you should get clarity on those things. Now, using this concept, I am telling you that the low pressure belted equator, see, low pressure means high temperature. But high temperature 
same temperature will not be there on the see land water land water no land and water will not have the same temperature no because of differential heating that's why pressure also will not be same that's why it is not a continuous belt there are breaks this has one pressure this is one pressure like that breaks will be there you can actually draw it like this okay anyhow overall you can call this as equatorial equatorial yes equatorial low pressure belt now if somebody asks you why equator has low pressure belt the answer is <coughs> high temperature so wind rises up so low pressure that is the reason <coughs> are you not writing on the notes you have to note down all the points these for example these points will not be there at a single place in geography class if you write the notes of water i'm teaching entire geography class that notes will be enough mostly of course you should read ncrts also but the notes are most enough okay so note down everything don't listen like a story or a movie note down you may not be able to write down everything i tell but write down the important points after going to home you once again write the fair notes fair notes if time is, if you find permits right now at least write the hints hints of the class because i will not give any dictation of notes i will be telling you should write this all quickly write down okay now friends <coughs> similarly in the polar area polar north pole and south pole temperature is very very low temperature very cool no cool areas so pressure is very high so polar high pressure belts polar polar high pressure belts are there so we are discussing the concept of pressure belts we are discussing the concept of pressure belts in the pressure belts concepts till now i discussed three pressure belts one is equatorial low pressure belt two are polar high pressure belts now this equatorial pressure belt and polar both pressure belts are created because of temperature only no temperature only no that's why we say these three are called thermal thermal pressure belts i mean pressure belts created because of the temperature there is no other reason thermal reason so what is the reason behind the pressure belt temperature so we have a thermal reason thermal reason whole temperature no other reason is there whole temperature however what we have observed what geographers observed is that strangely we observed that there are two more pressure belts here and here similarly here and here so there are one two three four more pressure belts were there for example here they found high pressure belt here they found low pressure belt which is surprising do you know why it's surprising tell me temperature is more here or here for example we i call this place as subtropical subtropical area because it is above tropical area what is tropical area friends in the equator tropic of cancer tropic of capricorn this is called tropical area just above the tropics here just above tropics here and here we call this as subtropical in those subtropical areas surprisingly they found high pressure belt similarly if this is polar area polar just below polar we call as subpolar subpolar in subpolar area they found low pressure subtropical high pressure surprising i'll tell you why surprising tell me in subpolar area subtropical where temperature is high high temperature will be there high temperature when high temperature is there pressure should be low pressure tell me you tell me you tell me near the subpolar area subtropical area out of these two which one will have low temperature subpolar because near to polar area no low temperature so it should have high pressure but low pressure is there that means these two pressure belts are not formed by temperature there is another reason that is called dynamic reason dynamic reason that is purely because of rotation of earth because earth is rotating i'll explain how it comes 
but just write down because of the rotation of the earth only because of dynamic factors these four pressure belts four means actually same here too same here also same names subtropical high pressure subpolar low pressure these four pressure belts are created because of rotation of earth that's why we call them as dynamic factors that we will discuss now how they are created we will discuss now okay whereas these three pressure belts polar equatorial polar are because of temper thermal thermal these four are because of rotation of earth for example if earth does not rotate if there is no rotation of the earth how many pressure belts will be there three. only three will be there but because of rotation of the earth we have how many seven pressure belts are there now let us discuss about the remaining four now okay shall i raise the board did you, did you write down this concept this concept, this concept you don't write down you shall write down, write down all concepts Now friends, <coughs> what they have observed, what they have observed is, see I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what they observed. Let us say this is earth. Let us say this is the equator. This is the equator. This is subtropical area. I am drawing the earth like this. To take the earth, turn like this, okay. This is sub And this is here also. This is <coughs> sub tropical. This is sub. This is. <coughs> I told you already. At equator, high temperature. So winds will <coughs> winds rise up. Friends, anything wind is also an object only. Even the the air has some weight, just like a stone. Stone, if you throw up, will it come down or keep on going up till sun <coughs> come down? Anything that has weight cannot escape the gravity of the earth, <coughs> except rockets or whatever, because rockets will go at escaping speed, <coughs> 11.2 kilometer per second escaping speed. If you can go at 11.2 kmph at the speed kilometer per second, if you can go at that speed, anybody can escape the gravity of the earth. You can go to outer space. But air and stones cannot be thrown. That means great height now. So any any weight that goes up has to come down. It has to come down. Okay. So the air which has gone up have to come down. But it cannot come down in the same path. Why? Because from below wind is rising up now. Wind is rising up, friends. So if it wants to go down, it cannot go down the same path. So after rising up, it will diverge and go down. So the wind rising up now. It will diverge like this. Diverge. Diverge. Diverging winds. Our diverging will come down here. This is because of rotation of the earth. If earth is not rotating, maybe who knows, maybe which rises up now, it may go like this and come down in the polar area. That possibility is there. But because of rotation of the earth, it is coming down here only. It is okay. Similarly, in the polar area, now come see I covered the equator, equator I have touched. Now go to the polar area. Go to the polar area. In polar area, the wind is the land is very cool, wind is very cool, high pressure. There the wind subside. Wind subside. Now friends, when the wind subside, will it go inside the earth or it will di it will diverge? Diverge. diverge. So the, after coming here, the wind will diverge. Here also. Here also, after hitting the earth, the wind will, wind will diverge. So the wind coming from polar area, wind coming from subtropical area, both will converge. When the winds converge, will they rise up or stay there only? Rise up. So when these two winds converge, you know, they will rise up. Here what is happening? Convergence is happening. Convergence. Understand? Similarly, here also, friends, here also, see, here also, these winds will diverge. 
here what is happening divergence here the winds coming down after coming down they will diverge so here divergence is happening divergence here here but equator what is the equator convergence the wind is coming from like this they both will converge and rise up that's why equator near equator not exactly equator i'll tell you the reason friends this uh, belt is a high pressure low pressure belt this low pressure is not always equator it depends upon see actually wherever sun is there no sun there only high temperature high temperature but sun is not always above equator sun will keep moving as sun keep moving no all the pressure belts also will keep moving that concepts i will explain after few minutes right now i want to explain about the convergence and divergence okay at equator what have convergence divergence equator what happens are you sure very good at equator you have convergence and rising of wind subsiding of wind rising of wind in subtropical area convergence divergence subsiding wind rising wind subsiding wind subsidence of wind here also see here also friends after the wind rises it will it will again again hey converge who is it after the wind goes up it will ever comes down friends tell me here what is happening here both winds are converging both winds will converge then subside subside here also you can do the same thing here also from polar area high pressure no winds will come they will rise up they will diverge here comes down here also comes down so this is how the overall atmosphere will circulate this is atmosphere i am drawing the entire earth you take entire earth polar equator entire earth atmosphere is circulating that atmosphere is not stationary atmosphere is circulating this is one circulation this is circulation that's why we call this concept as atmospheric circulation what you call it as atmospheric circulation entire atmosphere around the earth will always is always under the circulation now friends how many cells are there 1 2 3 here also 1 2 3 3 three cells cell means rotation cell one cell see wind is rising up coming falling down again coming this is cell see here also see wind is coming down like this rising up again going the circulation cell cell means rotation circulation how many cells are there each side three cells that's why this concept is called as tricellular tricellular atmospheric circulation and it is along the longitudes so we call it as tricellular meridional tricellular meridional circulation tricellular meridional atmosphere circulation or simply atmosphere circulation or simply or simply tricellular circulation whatever so this is the this one concept which understand one concept now from this concept you can tell why these two pressure belts are created you understand actually equator low pressure polar high pressure are thermal that we know but between these two how they are created for that i explain this one now from this you can tell that here wind is subsiding that's why it is it is where wind is subsiding high pressure low pressure i told you now where wind is coming down there which pressure will be there high pressure subtropical atmosphere where wind is rising up going up it will have low pressure i already discussed the concept no first i started the class this concept no low pressure sub polar low pressure now you understand see polar high pressure equator low pressure you understood based on the temperature these two i told dynamic factors dynamic that dynamic factors will explain just now from this you can tell it has high pressure because of subsiding winds it has low pressure because of rising winds rising winds 
these are the reasons so now i hope all of you understood all the seven pressure builds understood all seven and reasons for the pressure builds this is a very important topic in geography climatology one more thing i want to tell you let us say see this is earth you know equatorial low, low pressure belt subtropical high pressure belt subpolar polar here also subtropical subpolar low pressure belt polar high pressure belt tell me anybody tell me take subtropical in the north hemisphere take subtropical south hemisphere which one will be more continuous which one will have more breaks anybody which belt will be more continuous north or south south ha north sir why north is more continuous why south is more continuous let me see let us see take the world map africa saudi arabia iran india south east asia europe south america central america north america alaska friends in the northern hemisphere you have water land water land land water so there is no continuity whereas in the southern hemisphere in southern hemisphere mostly water is there here water land water land water land here mostly water is there somewhere land is there so here continuation is more continuation is more here less can you see now tell me subtropical belt is continuous in north or south more continuous south why because because there is less less change of water and land more continuity is there continuity you understood this is one very important topic you should understand okay second this diagram now here see what is your name chinmay tell me there are winds on surface of the earth there are winds here also out of these two winds which wind will you feel this one so friends the winds which are blowing here you no know, like this like this these winds you are standing here and you can feel those winds they are called lower atmospheric wind where these winds are called upper atmospheric wind they will be felt by whom they are felt by airplanes airplanes may feel those winds okay that's why okay anyhow regarding the jet streams and this is later jet streams are not exactly these winds jet streams are something that will go out of the system they will flow around the earth i will come to it later if you note down jet streams i will discuss later after this topic is all discuss okay as of now just remember that always keep the point in the mind whenever there is any flow of the wind on the surface of the earth the surface of the earth they will be exactly opposite flow in the upper atmosphere here also in the surface of the this direction of wind upper atmosphere to balance to balance that's how it is okay as our climate our weather conditions or climate do you know difference between weather and climate i told you first class right weather means the temperature pressure humidity wind everything right now at this point of time today right now if rainfall is there we say humid weather right now it's very hot means hot weather weather is at the point of time climate cannot be climate is not at single point of time climate is an average of long period for example rajasthan though today in rajasthan is raining today even then if somebody asks you what is the climate of rajasthan you have to say so it's very hot climate very dry climate if they ask you what is the weather of rajasthan means sir one second i don't know what is happening let me find out you have to call oh it's raining okay sir the weather today is it's raining understand weather you have to call and find out in the tv news tv weather forecast they will forecast weather climate nobody will forecast climate is a fixed thing long period average so climate is measured as an average of a long time weather is at at that point of time difference okay so what i am telling right now is our climates or weather conditions are affected by the surface winds mostly upper winds don't affect much that's why now we have to study these winds 
let us study these winds surface winds is very important after finishing the pressure belts i told you i will discuss about the plant winds i'll come to that now friends listen carefully the cells are there no the cells these cells were actually identified found by certain scientists for example one person called hadley found out that at equator winds will rise up they will move like this again they will subside at the subtropical area again they will come back again rise up mm -hmm. certainly like this so you call it as hadley cell you call it as hadley cell because hadley found it this side hadley only one side if i answer is same for perfect okay so hadley cell hadley cell whereas this is found by somebody called ferrell ferrell found out that the subsiding will go like this rise up here again come like this this is found by ferrell this is a ferrell cell this is automatically it's known but as it is near the polar area between subpolar polar they call it as polar cell call it as so you should know these three cells what is polar cell cell means circulation if somebody asks you what is polar cell you should be able to explain the wind subside in the polar area they diverge in subpolar they rise up again they diverge they come back again submerge so it creates a cell polar cell these three cells are called as tricellular atmospheric circulation okay now friends <coughs> these pressure belts no these are not uniform these are not fixed it's not a belt you fix a belt around there that it should be here only not like that it keeps moving it based on temperature no temperature is based on this equatorial low pressure belt is based on temperature temperature comes from where sun is sun fixed is it somebody somebody fixes sun on there it is always moving now did i discuss about the movement of sun in this class march april may june how so this is the next important concept fifth important concept you should understand all these small concepts to understand the broad concept of the pressure belts write down the fifth concept the movement of this concept name is the movement of the sun let us study the movement of sun friends see if this is earth equator see sun is moving me sun will not earth will only move earth moves but we will see sun move because we are turned from our point of view from our point of view from my point of view sun is moving see for example sun rises in the east sets in the west means sun is not rising and setting i am only moving but then the frame of reference is earth from earth for our eyes what is appearing we have tell that one only so for us we have tell that sun this is topic of this topic of topic of capricorn you know these two things 23 and of north 23 and of south now sun will be exactly let me draw a bigger diagram equator topic of cancer topic of sun is exactly on equator on march 21st on march in april sun goes here in may sun goes here in june 21st on june 21st sun exactly will be on the topic of cancer june again july sun will come down july sun will come down august this is april august sun comes here september again sun will september 21st or 23rd i am not very sure sun comes here equator september again october sun will come here october november sun comes here in december december 23rd sun is exactly on the capricorn sun again december after what will come generally january will come so again january see january sun will go here february here march again equator this is called the oscillation of the sun that's how sun moves now tell me tell me sun will be exactly above the equator in which months you can see and not a problem tell me march and two months march and september march 21st and september 23rd 
these two days sun is exactly above the equator friends when sun is exactly above the equator no exact center of the earth the entire earth will have 12 hours day 12 hours night exact sun will come at 6 am go at 6 pm or come at 7 am doesn't matter 7 pm 12 hours day will be there 12 hours night the, this concept is called as equinox equinox so how many equinox are there two equinox march 21st equinox and september today equinox equinox means on on that day 12 hours sunlight will be there 12 hours darkness will be there i mean no sun day and night total okay now see don't sun will stop here don't draw sun till polar areas sun will only oscillate tropical area tropical area means between tropical cancer to capricorn between these two sun always move tropical area that's why tropical areas are the hottest areas of the world very hot because sun is above them directly friend when sun is above you know sun rays fall vertically so more rays can fall when sun is away they fall slantly so less rays will fall less rays less rays will fall there okay that's how tropical areas are very hot now see when march see march 21st equinox april when sun goes see tell me in the northern hemisphere daytime will increase 13 hours day 11 hours night something like this may daytime will even increase 14 hours day you understand june highest june 21st june 21st called as summer solstice june 21st is called as summer solstice solstice for whom north hemisphere south hemisphere north hemisphere see when sun is here it is summer for whom north hemisphere winter for south hemisphere the same june 21st is called as winter solstice by whom people in australia new zealand they call it as they call june 21st as the winter solstice the usa india uk we call june 21st as the summer solstice so now from now onwards i will tell the class from the india point of view only from india point of view june 21st is the summer solstice that on that day the day is the longest day that longest day also depends upon latitude for example in india on that summer solstice day no in india 14 hours day 10 hours night 4 hours day means sun will come at uh, 5 am it will set at 7 pm 5 am it will come 5 30 am 7 30 7 day, almost 14 hours it will be day even 10 hours night in india but if you take canada see actually india us canada polar area in usa 15 hours day 9 hours night in canada 16 hours day 8 hours night if you go to greenland 20 hours day 4 hours day. 20 hours sun will come at 4 am set it midnight 12 o'clock real not joking sun will be there for 20 hours greenland in polar area sun will never set 24 hours will day 20 day only so if before the exam if you want to work very hard you go to polar area it will be 24 hours day only no night time at all Tuesday, okay so in that way but so what i'm selling is during summer solstice daytime will be more but the amount of time depends on latitude as you go away the daytime will increase similarly uh june it came here july again day will reduce to 14 hours 13 hours august 13 hours again september it will exactly 12 hours to night again october night time will increase october night time 13 hours night november 14 four, almost 14 hours night, let us say december 15 hours night december 23rd is called by as as the called as winter winter solstice winter solstice okay friends see winter solstice some uh, june 20 summer solstice on the winter solstice india will have not only india on december 23rd entire northern hemisphere will have longest night southern hemisphere will have longest day 
he should understand the difference. So, from which point of you talking? Northern hemisphere, southern hemisphere. Based on, for example, you tell me, on December 23rd, South Pole will have full day or full night? Full? Sun is here, no? Sun is here. So, you should have full day. On the same December 23rd, this North Pole will have full? Full day night. There is no day. So if you want to see for entire night, you can go there. There is no sun at all. No sun. Fully dark 24 hours. 24 hours. Okay. Okay. Friends, that's how it is. Now, this is one concept. Just keep in mind. Separate concept. Now, let us come back to the pressure bells. Now, I am going to tell you one very important concept. I will tell every concept very important only. Only then you listen to it. Okay. Now, I am going to tell one very important concept. That is shifting of the pressure bells. What is it? Shifting of pressure bills. I am drawing earth here, again earth here, again earth here. Okay. Now listen carefully. I am drawing geographical equator. This is the the reason why I am telling geographical equator is there is something called thermal equator. Thermal equator means, for example, in March, thermal equator is here. High temperature. In April, equator is here. May, it is here. June, it is here. Thermal equator will go to Tropic of Cancer in the month of June. Thermal means where sun is. Where sun is the thermal equator call. Okay? Now, friends, I told you about the pressure belts. Where is the equatorial pressure belt? Exactly below sun. Wherever sun is there, below that will have equatorial pressure belt. In the month of March, the belt will be on equator only. April, May, in the month of June, the equatorial low pressure will be where? In the month of June, where? Tell me. In the month of June, equatorial low pressure belt will be in which place? Huh? Tell me. Hey, tell me. In the month of June, equatorial low pressure belt will be where? At 0 degree latitude, 23 degrees north latitude. You? 23 north latitude. Equatorial low pressure belt means wherever sun is there, exactly below the sun, it is very hot. Because very hot, all the wind will rise up. So low pressure belt will be created. When sun is moving, April, May, in June, sun will come above Tropic of Cancer. So on Tropic of Cancer, you will have equatorial low pressure belt i know you are thinking equatorial how equator can be in equator will not move thermal equator will move thermal equator temperature geography equator all center only nobody can remove the geography equator okay now friends so in the month of march this is the equatorial low pressure belt this is subtropical low pressure who is it everywhere this is subpolar this is polar in the month of March. This is subtropical. This is, low pressure. this is polar in the month of March. March. Now, in the month of April, what is your name? Yeah. Bhaskar, tell me, in the month of April, eager to low pressure belt, will it move to the north or south? Very good. Will move north. June, April, May, Inka Paiki. June, Inka Paiki. Allah, Ilbo the Nata Paiki. Okay. Can I see? Now listen carefully. So I, now I have drawn this diagram in the month of March. This is called March diagram. I think like, I am just telling, okay? March diagram. Now I will I will explain June diagram. In the month of June, this belt will go almost here. So equal to low pressure belt will come here. See? Equal to low pressure belt. Then this belt will go up subtropical high pressure belt. This belt will also go even up. Subpolar will Polar will go outside the earth. Is it possible? No. So it will stay there only. So remember, only polar belt will not move. Remaining all belts will move. That is very important thing. Okay. Now here also below things. This subtropical high pressure is there. No. It will move to the equator. Here it will come. Subtropical high pressure. And the subpolar will move up. 
this, this polar is a polar. This polar will become very big. See, polar hyperspheric belt, very big. This will become very small in the month of May. Now, what is your name? You only. Lakshmi. This is a diagram for September. No, September. October. This belt will come down, move up. October. Very good. Down. November. December. So now I will draw December diagram. In the month of December, the equatorial low pressure belt will come down. Actually, it's here, no? It will come to here. Equatorial low pressure belt. Then subtropical come down. Subtropical high pressure belt. Subpolar low pressure belt. Polar become very small. Polar. These belts also will, all belts will come down. So in the month of December, all belts will move to the north, south. In June, all will move to the now this equatorial low pressure belt. Subtropical high pressure belt is there, no? It will come down. Subtropical high pressure belt. Polar, subpolar low pressure belt. Polar becomes very big. Polar high pressure belt. See, I, I have drawn the earth, but in different months, pressure belts are different locations. So we can tell. This is concept is called as shifting of pressure belts. This is a very important concept, friend. If you don't understand this concept, you can never understand the Mediterranean climate. And Mediterranean climate is a very important climate. Those people who are confused with this class, I will keep the, give the recording of this class. You can listen again and again and again. But the 6 to 7 concepts I am explaining are very important concepts. Listen again and again. If you have doubts, ask me. But don't ask me again and again. Ask me only once. Okay? Oh. Because if you ask me again and again, I will tell only once. Now, friends, see. Now, this concept is called shifting of pressure belts. This concept is based on movement of the sun. So, first you should, under first you should understand movement of sun. Only then you can understand the shifting of pressure belts. Now, friends, the next topic is planetary winds. Very important topic. What is time? 8? 40. 40. Yeah. 40. 40. Okay. 40 also okay, but I'm just let's do like okay because I have to finish. Uh, I have to finish planetary winds because planetary winds are dependent on the pressure belts. Okay, shall I erase the board? Even if you say no, I have to erase. Okay, Friends, that's why I have to note down. You should note down all these points. I know what you're thinking. I'm asking you to note down and I'm erasing the board, right? I am telling from next year, I want to note down. Okay? Now listen carefully, friends. Now, winds, planetary winds. To understand winds, first you should understand one simple concept that is, wind is nothing but moving air. Once somebody came to me, to our institute actually, for the faculty position, geography only, I actually asked him, what is the difference between wind and air? He said that, wind is which goes up, air is which goes like this. I ask him if he can leave, okay? See, as a geography faculty, he does not even know the difference between wind and air, and he is a senior faculty actually, okay? That's what he said. Friends, wind is nothing but moving air. When the air moves, whether this direction, this direction, what direction, any air that moves is called wind, that's all. For example, what is stream? Moving water. Water is there. If water is moving, called stream. Like air is there. If air is moving, called wind. Why will water move? Anybody? Why will water move? Generally, when there is a difference in the altitude, water will move. For example, this land is like this. Land is like this. That means it's at a higher level. It's a lower level. Now water will move in this direction. I think all of you know that, right? Water moves in this direction. So water moves from high potential energy. Do you know what potential energy? Friends, potential energy means you might have studied in 10th class. MGH. Mass into gravity into height. As you take any object higher, higher, higher from the earth, its energy increases. For example, there is water in the 10th floor, one tank is there, water tank in 10th floor. Another tank is in 2nd floor. You release water from both tanks. Where water will come more force? Higher only. Because high, as it go higher, more potential energy. When you release it water, no, all the potential energy converts into kinetic energy. For example, take a stone, throw from here, leave from here, it's red. Same stone from 20 floors, drop. What happens? It will come till here. Okay. The point is, 
as you drop the stone from greater height all that potential energy converts into kinetic energy with great force it comes okay so from a higher potential to lower potential water moves similarly wind also moves from high pressure to low pressure very important thing you should know wind always moves from for example at a place high pressure is there here low pressure is there wind moves from high pressure to low pressure though it's very small concept is very important okay wind always moves from high. for example if there is no pressure difference in this room there is no pressure difference wind will not move for example if i keep a mouth like this will wind move no but if i do why i am creating high pressure in the mouth high pressure so wind is coming out like that so now with this understanding let us discuss the planetary winds okay friends planetary winds are nothing but okay before planetary winds let me tell you see <coughs> take this one hey here i have to see here see from e is equator low pressure belt this subtropical high pressure so wind move like this subtropical high pressure belt this is subpolar low pressure belt so wind moves like this i have drawn it is over here polar high pressure subpolar low pressure so wind moves like this that's all these are all winds they are called planetary winds because they are blowing throughout the planet see from pole north pole to south pole throughout the planet they are there no that's why they are called as planetary winds the same planetary winds let me draw in this are you able to see this friends this one are you able to see this one okay listen this is equatorial low pressure belt so to high pressure belt so wind will move from like this here it will move from Why you are saying okay? Yes, wind high pressure to low pressure. Here high pressure to here high pressure to low pressure. This is the wind direction. Now, friends, before coming to the next point, I should explain one very important concept It's called as Coriolis force. It's a very important concept, Coriolis force. Friends, what is Coriolis force? Coriolis force is not a force. They call force, but it's not a force. Actually, Coriolis force is a deviation. Deviation. I'll tell you. Deviation means when you launch a missile into the air. For example, this is India. That is some other country. Okay. Now I want to launch missile from this point to that point. I want to launch missile from this point to this point. Now, if I launch the missile exactly like this in the air, in this direction, do you think it will go there? it will go here it will go like this similarly wind wind is blowing wind actually is blowing from here to here the wind will also blow like this aeroplane is there aeroplane An aeroplane wants to go from africa saudi arabia india go india to this part some place some uh, place in russia the the aeroplane should not try to go like this if it want to go like this it will be other place again from there you have to take another flight why unnecessarily so the flight has to point in this direction the flight will if they want to go there they'll point in this direction then they'll go like this understand so why why the flights missiles the air why they are unable to go in a straight line why they are deviating because of rotation of the earth because of rotation of the earth any moving object cannot go straight it will deviate now friends you may think because the rotation of why it is deviating that concept i can explain but that is not required that concept can be explained by looking at the angular speed angular velocity at equator the angular velocity is very high when you go towards the polar area it will reduce angular velocity that is because i tell you see at equator see for example this earth take a point a take a point b take a point c take a point d in 24 hours of time in 24 hours exactly earth will make one rotation so point a again will come back to a point b will come back to b c will come back to like that same 24 hours but tell me distance which will cover more distance a point will cover more distance or b more distance a only no at equator 
circumference is more no so distance a will cover more distance b will cover less distance c even less distance is changing but time is same time what is what is speed distance by time see angular speed is same not different actually angular speed means amount of angle covered by time a is for how much angle 360 degrees b is covering 3 degrees only c is covering 360 only so they are covering same angle in same time so angular velocity will be angular velocity means angle covered by time no it is same but the speed distance by time which has more speed distance by time a has more speed than b than c anyhow see uh, leave it actually these points are not required in UPS geography they will ask about all these things just remember that because of the rotation of the earth any moving object will deviate how it will deviate it is given by a scientist called as geographer called as feral feral you know feral feral cell feral feral said that in the northern hemisphere any moving object will deviate towards the right for example i am object right hand side in the southern hemisphere any moving object will move towards the for example to my left hand side not your left hand side for example if you want to try all of your hand run you understand okay friends so the coriolis force concept is that any moving object in the northern hemisphere will deviate towards its right hand side its right hand side you can write down coriolis force is nothing but deviation any moving object in southern hemisphere in southern hemisphere will deviate towards its left hand side northern hemisphere deviate towards right hand side for that to give better clarity i will draw some diagrams i will draw like this take equator exactly on equator there is no coriolis force zero coriolis force equator okay because friends actually coriolis force is proportional to mass of the object speed of the object and sin theta theta is the latitude equator what is the latitude equator latitude is zero friends if this is the earth La zero degree latitude, one degree, two degree, three. Like that, how many latitudes are there? This is ninety degrees latitude. In south also, zero degree equator, no? One degree south, two degree south, three degree south, four, five. Like that, ninety degree south. How many latitudes are there? Almost one eighty one. This side ninety latitudes. This side 90 equator zero is also there no zero total 181 latitudes are the latitudes equator is which latitude zero degree so on the equator what is coriolis force for example when any mass is moving no this is a missile friend missile is going I launch the missile another country country's name is X only always okay now I am launching a missile X country now mass of the missile if mass of the missile is more bigger missile it deviates more more coriolis force small uh, for example if it is a this is a point friend i launched a, a small missile it will deviate like this bigger missile like this even bigger understand so coriolis force deviation is more if the mass of object is more same with velocity also if missile is going very fast it will deviate more deviation similarly sin theta theta is the angle of the latitude so you tell me Bhaskar on the equator coriolis force is why sin zero is zero cos zero also cos zero is one that's why I was asking whether you know or not anyhow friends see say the, similar tell me at which latitude high coriolis force high coriolis force which latitude 1 degree, 2 degree, 3 degree, 90 degree, where? Where more Korea's force? You tell me, what is your name? Huh? Kiram, tell me, sin 1, sin 2, sin 3, sin 4, sin 90, which is more? Do you know sin theta, sin table, you know? Until which is more? Sin 1 is more, sin 90 is more. Sin? Are you sure? 
sin 1 is 1, sin 2 is 2, sin 3 is 3, right? <laughs> Anyhow, I think all of you know sin table, right? Sin 90 is 1, okay? So sin 0 is 0, sin 90 is 1, between the decimals, point 0.1, point 0.2, it changes like this, okay? Anyhow, so Coriolis force depends on the mass of object, velocity and then latitude. On equator, Coriolis force is 0, okay? Now, I will draw some nice diagrams. Let's say understand diagram. See, an object is an object wants to go in this way. How it will deviate, deviate towards? It actually goes like this. Another object, one object is here, friend. It wants to come like this, but deviate towards left. In the northern hemisphere, Coriolis force means in the northern hemisphere, any moving object has to deviate towards its right hand side so what is its right hand side see she is doing like this so anything you can tell me either this or this tell me huh? like this its right hand side see you have to go with the wind you start from here go like this this right hand side you have to go with that wind to understand its right hand side from here you cannot say now one wind wants to go like this it will move towards its right hand side. For the one wind wants to go like this, it will move towards? What is its right hand side? Up or down? It will move like this. You understand? So, is the in northern hemisphere, any moving object will move towards its right hand side. That is called Coriolis force. In southern hemisphere, for example, one wind wants to come like this. It will deviate towards its left hand side. Which side? Left hand side means? Down. For example, one wind wants to go like this. It will deviate towards? left hand side understand you go see you go with the wind and see left hand side you have to go along with the wind and turn left hand side okay okay friends now this is a Coriolis force now you understood Coriolis force right now based on this you tell me this wind will go towards its right hand side, right hand side. which side this side so the wind will not blow like this it will blow like this this wind will blow towards its right hand side yes its right hand side means like this why are drawn more see here i draw less here i draw more deviation why tell me compared to here here why more deviation Massa, wind has same mass. High latitude. Anyhow, here wind actually wants to come like this. High to high to low pressure. It will move towards its right hand side. Which side is which side? Yes. It will move like this. Now there are names for these winds. These winds are coming from the west. Always remember, you are coming which place? Tirupati came to Vijayawada. Do you call him Thirupati boy, Vijayawada boy? Thirupati, Vijayawada means everybody Vijayawada boy. So you are Anandpur boy, you are. You are Karnul boy, you are Anandpur boy, you are. I don't know your example. So see, from where you are coming, you will put that name. From where you are coming. You never put the name where you are going. Today I am going to America. Will you call American or Indian? I, where sort of. Similarly, winds also. From where they are starting, we call them. For example, these winds are coming from west to east. So we call them easterly, westerly? Westerly. westerly. So these are westerlies. Similarly, these are moving from east to west. They are called as easterly. Easterly, polar easterly. Because they are coming from the pole. So they are called as polar easterly. These winds are there now, these winds. They are coming from the east and north also, see. They are coming from north to south, north to south, east to west. So they are called northeast winds. These are called northeast winds. These are westerlies. These are polar easterlies. These are the names given to the winds. These names are very important. Very important names. Okay. This year, Plims, this year, Plims exam, there was a question. Question is, wherever westerlies are there, no? Western, this is ocean, friend. This is ocean. Westerlies are blowing westerlies. 
when vessels are blowing for example you take a bucket of water you do like you blow the air surface water will go towards yeah, from here to here see blow the air surface water will go to that side similarly wherever westerlies are there the westerlies all the surface water of the ocean will go from west to east surface water is warm or deeper water is warm when no ocean is there surface ocean is warm deeper ocean is warm surface only because sun rays fall surface only no so when in the ocean when westerlies are blowing all surface water goes this side this part of ocean will become hot this part will become cool there is a question this year simple fundamental question but students who don't understand the fundamental hey, this is not there in textbook this is not there in any book i how can you know you know nothing there in the books common sense when westerly is there all the water goes to the east westerly means west to east no all surface goes to the east it becomes hot that's all what is there in that simple question this year prince question that is okay friends northeast winds are also called as trade winds trade you know why trade because this part of the earth see this part of the this part of the earth you know has many countries india africa north african countries arabian country all country and in those days egypt old civilization india old civilization uh, iran iran also mesopotamia old civilization iraq iran so china more china also so all the countries are in this region only so trade used to happen trade in those days trade when they go on the ship you no know, there is no motor steam engine is not there no engine you have to um, sail so you have to follow the wind they used to see the winds and follow with the winds okay that's why these winds are called as trade winds trade similar here also here also wind actually wants to go from high pressure to low pressure but it will move towards its left hand side southern hemisphere no so it will move towards this side so these are the winds can anybody tell me these winds are called north east winds no these are called as south west they are moving from east to west no called as south east winds they are coming from south to north east to west so they are called as south east trade winds trade only trade winds north east trade winds south east trade winds now here winds go from high pressure to low pressure but they'll move towards their left hand side because of coriolis force left hand side correct hand means which side that side so winds move like this they are called as called as westerly is only this westerly westerly is only here winds high, high pressure to they want to move like this but because coriolis force they'll move left hand side, side. they are called as polar polar east to west is why from east to west polar east is polar east is friends these are called planetary winds so this is this is this is the northern hemisphere southern hemisphere these are northeast trade winds westerlies polar easterlies southeast trade winds westerlies polar easterlies winds but here you cannot direction here you can see that's why i draw this diagram okay they are called planetary winds because they blow throughout the planet name the three planetary winds trade winds westerlies polar easterlies are called planetary winds because they blow throughout the planet they are also called as permanent winds because they are permanent throughout the year permanent winds right down why you like this right down permanent winds planetary winds permanent winds some people call it as invariable winds invariable what is invariable friend invariable means they will not vary they will be there throughout the year they will not vary invariable winds they are called primary winds some people call them as primary that is most important winds so planetary permanent primary invariable same how many planetary winds are there three trade winds westerlies polar westerlies three three um, uh, planetary winds are there three or six you can say six three plus six no 
but friends see now i'll come to shifting of the winds see when the belts are shifting winds also see the winds which are here now they will be here see actually they are here now they are here westerlies are here now now they will be here polar easterlies are here now they will be there only now when you take italy greece these countries take those countries are actually here these countries are here here countries are there this summer right this winter right in winter see in winter the trade winds see no, these trades are there no these winds these winds will be here here westerlies will be there now listen careful friends you understand what i'm what i'm doing you understand this is the italy or greece friend italy or greece it is here italy and greece will not move they will be there only italy and greece winds only will move you understand that right now italy and greece in summer season they are getting which winds easterlies north east trade winds in winter season they are getting westerlies very important note down mediterranean countries mediterranean countries get trade winds trade winds in summer season <coughs> and westerlies in winter season trade winds in summer season and west is winter season <coughs> now i will tell you one excellent very interesting point see this is africa this is europe i am talking about this country see europe italy greece here trade winds will come from where east westerlies come from where tell me trade winds are coming from where land westerlies coming from where which which is ocean here which ocean atlantic ocean you know that no now westerlies are coming from the water so they will get lot of moisture so rainfall with a rainfall westerlies will bring rainfall trade winds are coming from the land on land there is no water vapor no they are dry no rainfall now tell me mediterranean countries in summer season they have rainfall no rainfall ha huh? mediterranean countries in summer season the trade winds come from the east land there is no rainfall winter season they get westerlies from the water so there will be rainfall so write down mediterranean regions will have summer dry and winter rain summer dry and winter winter wet they have wet winters and dry summers wet winters and dry summers why because of shifting of the planetary winds the winds are shifting why because of shifting of the pressure belts as the pressure belts are shifting winds also will shift as winds are shifting the climate will change that's why if somebody asked recently again this somebody came to me again jogger faculty only uh, asked them which area is favorite they said climatology i asked which climate which is favorite area he said pressure belts and winds then asked him why mediterranean will have winter rains but he could not answer that is the problem there are very fundamental things why mediterranean region will have winter rains why because in the winter season westerlies will come that's where rainfall in summer season trade winds will come from the land from land means no water no so no rainfall dry simple point it is but they don't have that fundamental things okay any of friends today i have covered pressure belts and planetary winds is over we'll meet next class you take care bye